Anyway, we're back. Sorry, I might have hit the wrong button. I actually tried to hit the share button on this, and uh, all of a sudden it stopped. So, uh, by the way, uh, if you're uh, watching this live stream online, uh, please stick with me. Um, I will sign off when I'm finally done going online, so do be aware of that. And uh, so stick with me until I say this is Freeman Sullivan signing off. So, and you know, we always have te technical difficulties. Can't avoid it. So then walk around here. There's a lot of people milling about. would like to log into the chat let me know how the pictures are coming out and the audio visual let me know hey how you doing not too bad Down because I was paying for my meter, and a guy from the neighborhood comes by and he goes, Yeah, awesome. Good luck with you. You, you, know, you guys are doing it. Yeah, nice. Definitely. And we got a pretty good crowd. I just counted 100 people, and even more people. I don't know. I like to count, so I actually know. Like, it's not some stupid. Oh, you actually guess. counted? Counted. Okay, about 100. Teacher, so I'm always counting kids as they're moving. Okay. So I'm really good at it. <laughs> it's a skill. Yeah, well, this is the first live stream I've done for, for quite a while. There hasn't been a lot of going on here in the Bay Area yeah, that's great. community. This has been it. You've been around? Yeah, well, yeah, I've been, been hanging out in Oakland, living an easy life. Yeah, I live in Fruitvale. Yeah. That's where my daughter lived for a really long time, and my one of my was supposed to spread until someone got shot outside her house. Oh. And then they moved. Yeah, we had a... Yeah, it's, I... My neighborhood... Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm like, uh, I don't really feel, I, you know, my neighborhood is, is safe. Yeah. So. She, you know where she was? <laughs> she was fine when she was down in the flats under the highway, under the freeway there. She was fine. And then they moved up the hill uh -huh. to try to get like a little bit nicer place. And that's where the guy is. That's where Figures, the right? girl got shot. And I was like, well, they also bought a foreclosed house. And I told them, that is such a bad luck. I can't believe you're doing it. Yeah, I had an incident. Well, not an incident, but I met. Uh, we got dogs, and we were taking the dogs out. And this kid walked up. These two kids, you know, 13 or 14 years old. You know, they wanted to pet the dogs. They said fine. And then they go home, and that uh, an hour later, one of the kids gets murdered. Right? It was a mistaken identity. Right? 14 years old. Right? So, but generally, we don't have too much. There's not, you know too much crime in our little area. And I think Oakland gets a bad reputation for crime because most of it is is more east. And it's actually a way for more cohesive sound. Hello, everybody. It's in San Francisco now. It's good to see you. Terrible. All right, well, I'm going to. Carter, it's good to see you. When do we want it? Now. All right, I got to go grab my bag here, folks. Now. Call free, free Oakland. Oakland. Now! Oh, oh, free Oakland! When do we want it? Now! Thanks for watching, my dad. Thank you all for coming. This is Oakland Fossil Fuel Resistance. We're a coalition of 12,000 people who have signed our petition. All right, on that. We're a coalition of 80 or 90 organizations that have signed our letter. What do we want? A call free Oakland. When do we want it? Now! now. Let me introduce you to our MCs. My name is Michael Kaufman. I'm one MC. And Katie Poloni is the other MC. And I'm going to give you to Katie right now. Hold on a second. Yeah. Hi. Well, I'm going to wing it. Um, I'm going to introduce our first speaker. We're going to have a few speakers. They're not going to be long because we've got to skedaddle into the council at 5.30. So this will be nice brief and to the point. And I am very happy to introduce Sebastian. He's one of our West Oakland residents. We have a group for anybody here that lives in West Oakland. 
here and become part of it. We meet every other Tuesday night at St. Patrick's Church. They're wonderful and supportive. And here's Sebastian. Thank you to all the other, other organizations that are coming out to support. Um, so, uh, hi, my name is Sebastian. Um, when Katie asked me to say a few words, I was a bit hesitant and fearful. Uh, but what? You know, I'm a person of color that faces discrimination and racism from the police brutality and institutional failure. I'm a student that faces loans and mounting debt. I'm a resident that faces hyper gentrification. I'm a believer that faces a society that has become hopeless to the fate of the world. And sharing this moment with you shouldn't come out of fear, but understanding and urgency. That the fight here is no coal. And this is not only a fight against coal, this is a fight for the Miwok and Chechenya natives that settled before us. It's a fight for the Peralta settlers who Woo! came after them. This is a fight for the African Americans that fled the southern terrorism. This is a fight for our health and for the lives of our children. Ultimately, this is a fight for our changing uh, climate, a fight for our land and dirt and seas and air that we have arisen from. This is a fight for environmental justice, a fight for believers, and a fight for the hopeless. This is a fight not only against coal, this is a fight for the most beautiful and most powerful race of all the human race. And Oakland has no more space for the marginalization of minorities by the developers under the guise of urban renewal. Oakland has no more space for environmental injustice. No more space for injustice of any kind. In my deepest moments of fear, I recite this quote. Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that we fear most. And your playing small does not serve the world. There is nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. Right? Right. And it's not just in some of us, it is in everyone. And when we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. And as we're liberated from our own fear, we present, our presence automatically liberates others. So I'd like to thank you for being present here and fighting coal. Thank you. Thank you, Sebastian. Sebastian comes from the neighborhood group in West Oakland that is fighting diesel fuels, fighting this threat of coal dust, 10 tons of coal dust every week sprinkling down on us. That's why we're not going to allow that to happen. That's why we're all going to go inside and tell the city council, no coal in Oakland, right? Yeah. All right, I'm going to introduce the next uh, group. It's a group of young people. Look at me, I'm a young people, and I'm only 70. Yeah. But they're not here yet, I'm told, so we're going to have to move on. And let me introduce... They're coming. Oh, they better hurry up. <laughs> While they're coming, you may have this chant in your in your hands right now. Hey, hey, ho, ho, coal trains have got to go. Hey, hey, ho, ho, coal trains have got to go. Hey, hey, ho, ho, coal trains have got to go. Hey, hey, ho, ho, coal trains have got to go. Hey, hey. to us and hearing us right now. Yeah. Woo! These folks here are from Bay Localize. They're called New Voices Rising. And let me give you to one of the people in the group. Hold on a second. Good afternoon. My name is Allison Ginn. I'm 16 years old and I live in East Oakland. We are from the Summer Climate Justice Leadership Academy. We're made up of youth from different parts of Oakland. We want to achieve environmental justice locally through education, 
so we can develop solutions. We're here to address the issue of how coal exports are impacting low-income communities. By exporting this coal, the city will be allowing 26 million tons of CO2 emissions into our air. Low-income communities are slowly dying out and no one seems to care while the wealthy get to buy their own air. Not all of us have the resources or the money to live a healthy life. But exporting this coal, the city is allowing pollution to happen, making it difficult for a future to happen. The mayor is putting all these pollutants into our community without thinking of how this will affect us. She just wants to profit. Everything is a price tag, even our lives. Mm. Communities such as West Oakland and North Richmond are impacted by urban pollution, putting them at a greater risk. It's not a coincidence that's happening in low-income communities. It's unfair. We all deserve a healthy community for us and for our future generations. The color of our skin, where we live, or how much we make should not dictate if we get to live a long, healthy life. Woo! 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 about the new coal exports in the low income areas. And the, also, they are, the area is already highest in asthma rate with all the big trucks and also the freeway running right next to it, the, right next to the West Oak area. Me and my youth, my fellow youth, are opposed to the coal exports. Yeah. Yeah. years old. A youth in Oakland that will be affected by the coal export. I'm here to tell you how exporting coal is affecting our communities globally and locally. This is just a uh, this just not affecting California or the, or the United States but other countries as well. Burning this uh, burning these coal in my homeland and seeing my people suffer for your own profit is unjust. The mayor is just making all this money while we are suffering the cost. Pollution will never end if we allow this to go through.
Thank you all for coming. This is fabulous. It looks great. Everybody's got a camera. Take a picture. Let me introduce you again to Katie Poloni, our leader from West Oakland, our leader in Oakland, who will introduce a very important speaker. Hold on a second. Justice goes back decades, and beyond saying that he is Reverend Daniel Buford from Allen Temple Baptist Church, I want to say he is also an artist, which I just found out recently. And if you want to see an amazing exhibit of Black for Black History Month that includes art, go to Allen Temple Baptist Church. Yeah. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. Thank you. First, giving honor to, to God, the beneficent and the merciful one, the one God to whom praise is due forever. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. I say these words because I hear, I'm here as a warrior for peace on earth as well as a warrior for peace with earth. A warrior for peace on earth. We have battled around issues of police brutality. We battled around issues of gentrification and transportation. But then as a warrior for peace with the earth, we have battled to make it known that we live in a toxic triangle here in the Bay Area if you live in Richmond, Hunters Point, or any part of Oakland. As a warrior for peace with the earth, we have battled against the Home Depot Walmart-sized mega crematorium that they tried to uh, build here and that the city council almost let happen, that yeah. they might let happen if we let it slip through. Yeah. Still. And as a person who has worked for peace on earth, as well as peace with the earth, we have <laughs> been concerned about all of the toxins that go into our community. So I want to state something that hasn't been stated yet, but is fairly obvious. Uh, some of you heard earlier that there was a song that was being played by uh, Hugh Masekela. Uh, and uh, if you look it up on YouTube, uh, it's a, a song called Stimula, but it's, uh, it's a, called the Coltrane song. And he talks about the, uh, the effects of uh, the diamond mines, the coal mines, the bauxite mines, and other mineral uh, extraction uh, ventures in South Africa. So that as we talk about no coal here in Oakland, let's remember that there is a cost even at the point of extraction. So it's a, there's, a, there's a cost for the coal miners because of the conditions that they have to work in and the health aspects of what they have to work in. There's a cost right there. So let us not be so selfish about we not wanting coal here and know that the reason, the only reason it can come here is because somebody had to dig it out of the mine because they didn't have any choice for any other kind of job right. because right. they had to dig it out of the, of the earth. So let's not forget that other aspect of, of the coal mining process. Another aspect of the coal mining process that I would like to share with you, to remind you of, and uh, just to think about since we're here in California, and what is it that we're most in need of other than justice in California but water? water. So you, you knew that without rehearsing that. <laughs> <laughs> you long enough. But water is used in the coal extraction process. Mm -hmm. Water is used in the coal transportation process. Water is used in the coal cleaning process. Water is used in the steam energy process. Water is used in the slurry and the storage of coal mining waste. Water with, with, with the pollutants from coal that's been oxidized and carbonized and sent up into the air. Water comes back as acid rain to pollute the plants and the crops. So no matter how much organic food you think you're eating, it's being polluted by the acid rain that comes from the coal production process. So then there are many, many reasons for us to think about this because they're polluting the earth. 
Why is water in the earth? Why is it here? Why is oil in the earth? Why is it here? Why is coal in the earth? Why is it here? Well, why is blood in your bloodstream? Why is calcium in your bones? Why is there lymphatic liquids in your system? Why is there an endocrine system? Why is there a nervous system? Why is there a circulatory system? All of these are part of the life system of the body. And coal and oil and water are part of the life support system of the earth. You take oil out of the ground and you put polluted water in its place, from fracking you have earthquakes. You, you take polluted coal water and you take polluted oil water and you pump it back into an aquifer, then you poison the water that we could be using for drinking or plants or other things. So I'm here today to speak up for water and to speak up for justice, and to say that we don't right. The last point, which I think is a very obvious point, we don't need coal to survive, but we, and we cannot survive without water. There's a satellite right now that's or orbiting the Earth from a thousand miles away, a million miles or however many miles they got it up there. It's a long way away. <laughs>
joking on just for the plenty price. We don't need coal and we don't take lies. over there. It's amazing to see all of you out here. We need to stop 10 tons of coal. We need 10 tons of people. Maybe we have five tons of people here right now. You look beautiful. 
let me give you some chance to send you away, to send you inside. Who's got the chance sheet? Do I have the chance sheet? What we're going inside to do is to make sure that the Oakland City Council says no to Coles. They will be saying that, we hope, on September 21st. You need to all come back here on September 21st for the next City Council meeting where we will say again, no to coal. And, w and we're gonna say no to coal just like this. When our city's under attack, what do we do? When our city's under attack, what do we do? When our city's under attack, what do we do? When our city's under attack, what do we do? Thank you very much, everybody, for coming. Please go inside and watch your city council, but you have to go inside by going around the side door over there on 14th Street. You can't come in this way. Thank you again, everybody, for coming. All right. Hey, folks, while we're heading inside, they are doing security screening because we had this protest outside. So give us a poster or something you want to put outside and come back to get. You can see right here. Time to go sit down. Also, we are going to come back after. Anyway, uh, take a brief seat over here. You're in Oakland uh, with Freeman Sullivan. Very glad that you were here to watch. Coal Free Oakland rally here. And uh, we can take a look at this ugly mug here in just a second. Uh, we have a couple of numbers for you to call. So let me pull those out. And since nobody entered in on the chat, I can't enter anything on chat. But if you're really pissed about this and uh, you're like me, you're proactive, uh, number to call. And this is, this is a direct line into Phil Tagami's office. He's the... Uh, CEO of California Capital and Investment Group, the group that was uh, tasked with developing the Oakland Army uh, base, and his telephone number is 510-463-6364, and the, uh, and let me read that again, that's 510-463-6364, and that's the number to Phil Tagami, the main developer. Um, and there's another number here you can call, um, and this is to the California Capital and Investment Group. This is the main line, and that number is 510-268-8500. And uh, just call and let them know how you feel that you don't want Oakland to uh, have to bear the brunt of the having coal shipped through the community here. Uh, you know, it's like a bomb that's waiting to go off. So, uh, so if you could do that, make a call. It only takes a few seconds. 510-463-6364. Uh, so this is uh, Freeman Sullivan, and uh, we're going to sign off now, and because uh, a bunch of folks are going to be going into the city council meeting, and the mayor has already stated that she does not want coal to be shipped through Oakland from Utah. So uh, at least we have that on our side, and a number of the Oakland city councilmen have already spoken about this, and also said that uh, voiced their opposition to this plan, and. Uh, just for a little note, uh, Phil Tagami's office is in that fourth floor of the building across the street. So there you go. Anyway, this is Freeman Sullivan signing off. Much love and much peace.